So thank you guys for tuning in. Wanted to do something a little different today. Over the past year, I've received lots of comments from those of you asking, what does a good loiter look like? How do you get a good loiter with APM and Pixhawk? So what I'll do is actually talk through these steps, cut to some previous clips so you guys can see the steps that I go through to get a good loiter in the field. Step number one, I always recommend having some good mounting tape to hold your Pixhawk or APM to your frame. As you guys know, the more rotors you have, the more susceptible you are to vibration. And 3DR packs some good double-sided sticky foam in each box with the Pixhawk. The next thing that I recommend is always do a really good compass calibration routine. Compass calibration in Mission Planner can be tricky at times, but what you want to do is face north rotate your multi-rotor two times around the pitch axis then turn 90 degrees and rotate your multi-rotor two times around the roll axis then your compass offsets will be saved once the calibration is done you always need to be concerned about any sort of interference coming off of each of these ESC's run the compass mote command see what your interference is like and you can always use a GPS antenna mask to actually design this and 3D printed it. It's on Thingiverse. I'll post a link to it below. Compass Moat is a nifty command line utility and mission planner that will log your ESC interference. What you do is you flip your props over and rotate them one position so that you can spin your motors up under load. you'll see that Compass Moat logged the different readings. And in this case, the interference at the full throttle was 68%, which is incredibly high. So what I did next was added the GPS compass stand and ran the test again. Now you can see that with the stand, our interference is substantially lower at 4%. Once you take care of those items, you're ready to get in the air, but not quite ready to loiter yet. So I always recommend getting it up in stabilized mode and then running an auto-tune. I have auto-tune set up on a switch on my transmitter. Make sure that you do this on a calm day and you'll notice that it's currently tuning the roll axis and then we'll automatically switch to the pitch axis. You can still use your pitch and roll sticks if you need to reposition your multi-rotor and when you're done and let off the sticks it will resume auto-tuning. This process should take anywhere from five to seven minutes to complete. And once you do your auto-tune and bring your multi-rotor back down you can always feel free to tweak those gains. Sometimes they're not perfect so I'll need to go in and adjust. So once that's done, you're ready to loiter. Make sure you got a good GPS fix, have that flight mode set up on your transmitter, take it up in the air, toggle into loiter. We're in loiter mode and I always recommend doing your initial test on a less windy day. Today, there were about 12 to 15 mile an hour winds, but as you can tell, this is not the first test and loiter held position and altitude very well. While in loiter mode, your stick inputs will still work. You can see here that I'm giving it yaw to the left just to let it spin while it stays in location. And then I begin to yaw back to the right. So those are the steps I go through to get a good loiter. There's further tuning you can do, but those will definitely get you to where your loiter is dialed in. And the great thing about it is that's the basis for all of the autonomous stuff that you're going to be doing with Pixhawk. So you get that loiter locked in, you're going to be having a lot of fun with autonomous flight. I'll put links to all of those video segments below if you guys wanna check them out individually. If you guys have any suggestions or feedback, please post it below, would love to hear it. And until next time, thanks for watching.